Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Automation Alley's Virtual Tech Takeover hosted by Tata Technologies. My name is Allison Trumbull. I am an Automation Alley's Relationship Manager, and we here at Automation Alley are Michigan's Industry 4.0 Knowledge Center and a World Economic Forum Advanced Manufacturing Hub, or AMHUB. We obsess over disruptive technologies like blockchain, 3D printing, and AI. Our goal is to take these big, complex concepts and make them easier for companies and individuals to understand and implement. We work with a wide range of companies, from those that are grasping the concept of digitization to the thought leaders and innovators in Industry 4.0. And we do this with a plethora of events and we obtain content from every aspect of industry and academia to give businesses a competitive advantage to help them along their digital transformation journey. Speaking of events, thank you for joining us today. And don't forget, we do have our Industry 4.0 Conference Integrate coming up. It will be a hybrid event, so virtual and in-person at TCF Center in Detroit. There is a limited amount of sponsorships left, so if you have any interest in speaking, exhibiting, or participate, participating, please reach out to me. And don't forget, all Michigan manufacturers do receive one free ticket courtesy of the MEDC. So you can find information for all of that on our website. But now on to our presenting company. Tata Technologies is a global engineering and product development digital services company focusing on fulfilling its mission of helping the world drive, fly, build, and farm by enabling manufacturing clients across the automotive, industrial, machinery, and aerospace vertical, verticals realize better products and drive efficiencies in their businesses, leading to the development of products which are better for the end customer, environment, and society at large. Today, we're gonna to be diving into front-loading and computational fluid dynamic software used to help design engineers examine trends, dismiss less desirable design options, and improve productivity. So we're gonna be hearing from business development and simulation consultant, Casey Pratt. So throughout the presentation today, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of our screen to type in any questions. At the very end of the presentation, we will be answering all of those live. So thank you everybody for joining us today and Casey, the floor is yours. All right, thank you very much, Allison. Good morning to everyone and thank you for joining us again. Uh, today we're going to be discussing SimCenter Flow EFD for NX, or essentially an embedded computational fluid dynamics module within Siemens NX. So Allison did a great job. Is it just an overview of the company? A couple other things that we just want to mention as Tonta Technologies going in. We are a Siemens Platinum level partner. Uh, what this means is we're it's the highest achievable uh, partner rank for Siemens. Uh, and we're a smart expert within the CAD CAM Sim Center and FEMAP and Team Center realms. Uh, so that means that not only are we trained and certified in the utilization and deployment of these products, uh, but we've also had our customers vouch for our knowledge uh, in their own implementations. Tata Technologies is a large company with a global footprint, and we work with many of the leading OEMs in the world. And as you can see here, we have offices all over the world with over 9,000 innovative professionals on staff to help our customers achieve their dreams of creating better products. While some obvious non-disclosure disclosure agreements prevent us from naming names, our clients include many of the world's most renowned automotive, aerospace, and industrial heavy machinery, original equipment manufacturers, and their extended supply chains. So with that, we'll jump right into today's topic. Uh, and so first of all, what is Flow EFD? Flow EFD is a front-loading, multi-CAD embedded CFD tool for designers. And when I say front-loading, front-loading is the concept of performing your simulations earlier in the design cycle to maximize the impact and catch issues before the late stage validation phase. There are several features to differentiate Flow EFD from other tools on the market. And this slide aims to highlight some of the key features and functionalities. Flow EFD is a general purpose tool, which can be used in a wide range of flow and heat transfer problems. And it has been specifically developed for non-CFD specialists to use in order to get fast, accurate results. 
The Masher and the Solver have unique proprietary technologies which facilitate the streamlined CAD embedded analysis approach of this product. The result is a drastic reduction in barrier to entry and overall CFD simulation time. The tool is available in five versions to support your MCAD workflow and here today we'll be looking at the NX specific version in this demo, but the process is identical for other MCAD systems. So here's the roadmap for our demonstration today. This workflow is going to mirror the actual steps that would be taken to go from geometry to CFD results using the software. We'll be looking at each of the steps in a little more detail to highlight some of the unique features of Flow EFD for NX. The model we'll be using is an IGBT liquid cooled module, which can typically be found in an electric vehicle or renewable energy applications. The modules are used when large amounts of current need to be switched on or off rapidly to control a motor, for example. Uh, the, power the power semiconductors can generate kilowatts of heat under sustained load, therefore liquid cooling is the only way to keep them operational and reliable. A typical result visualization can be seen here with the temperature variation on a surface plotted along with the water flow streamlines. The first step that we'll be covering is the INX integration piece. So Flow EFD is natively embedded in Siemens NX. We support the latest versions of NX all the way back to NX7. So that means there's no need to transfer geometry from CAD into a CFD tool. All of the assembly and the part parametric definitions are maintained so modifications can be made easily. This is especially powerful when it comes to optimizing the geometry. Compare this with using a neutral file format like STEP where all our parameters are stripped out and you're left with just a dumb solid. The fluid region is automatically detected based on an internal flow region and this is updated with geometrical changes as well. The image here shows the water region that is detected by Flow EFD, but let's take a closer look at some of these features. So here's the NX interface in modeling mode currently. If we were to explode this assembly, we can see that the parts that make up the IGBT cooler. It's important here to model all of the materials in the thermal path from the semiconductor to the fluid. We can see the silicone, the solder, the copper chip carrier, and the thermal paste attaching the chip carrier to the base plate. The casing is made of aluminum and the whole assembly is designed to operate in vehicle under hood conditions. There's the addition of lids which serve the purpose of closing the water region and for applying flow boundary conditions. If we take a look at the copper base plate in a bit more detail, we can open the part and see that it's been designed very simply in NX using an educated guess for its predicted performance. Looking at the NX expressions, we can see there are three parameters controlling the heat seek pin width, draft, and pattern spacing. The model has been designed this way with later optimization in mind. Jumping back to the main assembly and taking a cross section, we can see that there are some geometrical overlaps between parts around the O-ring and the silicone potting compound. Flow EFD has no issue with overlapping and dirty geometry, and there is no need to spend time fixing this. We just need to be careful with our material priorities. So Flow EFD is started from the menu tree under simulation, and that starts the Flow EFD mode and checks out the license. And we see the addition of the Flow Analysis ribbon toolbar, which is used to control the analysis. The lids on the inlet and the outlet can be created automatically using the Create Lids tool. And the leaks tracking tool can be used to visualize where the non-watertight gaps are in the assembly. Finally, let's use the flow EFD check geometry functionality to check the fluid region. Clicking on the show fluid volume button will highlight on the screen where the fluid regions are. There are some small enclosed volumes, as we've mentioned, around the O-ring, which will be ignored later, but the main flow region has been detected correctly. This part doesn't need to be created in NX. It's automatic, automatically created and automatically updated. The geometry is now ready for flow EFD analysis. So the benefits of having an NX embedded approach are that there's none or at least minimal geometry simplification necessary. And those geometry changes are detected and the project is updated automatically updating uh, our recognized fluid flow area. 
The tool is easy to use for existing NX users as it's just an extension of the CAD tool. What we saw there was the NX embedded nature of the software and how designers can leverage pre-existing NX models to perform a CFD analysis. Again, the familiarity of the NX interface and Flow EFD being a logical extension makes that tool easy to use for the NX designer. No need to be an analyst or have advanced training in order to use uh, this tool. So now that we have prepared and check the geometry, we're ready to set up an analysis on the assembly. The Flow EFD project is created using a wizard driven process. Flow and thermal boundary conditions are applied directly onto the NX parts. And if materials have been applied in NX, we can import those directly into the Flow EFD engineering database. So let's start the wizard and look at these steps. The first step is to name the project. And we can also see the project can be created on an NX family of assembly members if needed. This project is going to be an internal analysis as the inlets and the outlets are well-defined. And the exclude cavities without flow conditions is enabled to ignore the previously seen cavities. Heat conduction in solids is enabled uh, to consider conduction and convection. And water is chosen as our working fluid. The wall conditions are left at adiabatic to ensure all of the heat is transferred into the water and the ambient temperature is set to 65C to replicate under hood conditions. Once the wizard is finished, we can see the computational domain around the assembly, which has been sized automatically based on the wizard selections. So let's quickly import all of the NX materials which have been assigned. The assembly is scanned and we can accept the detections. Materials can also be applied manually. So here we're going to apply silicone on the chips themselves from the independent Flow EFD materials library. And this is useful as not all NX material definitions have temperature dependent properties. Next, we'd like to assign the water flow conditions using a boundary condition from the ribbon. A volume flow rate of one and a half gallons per minute is applied to the interface of the lid we created earlier. The thermodynamic properties show the inlet water temperature of 65 C. In a similar manner, then we define an outlet pressure condition on the other lid. This ultimately allows the water to leave the system and gives us a known pressure condition. A volume source is used to apply a heat load. Multiple parts can be selected at once and the power will be split across the bodies. So we'll apply 360 watts on the IGBTs and 144 watts on the protection diodes. Like this, other flow EFD features can be applied directly onto the NX geometry. So the Flow EFD project is initialized with the wizard and can be applied at any stage of the design process. The engineering database can be shared across a team to ensure consistency, and the Flow EFD data can be reused and persistently associated with a part if desired. Projects can be cloned and templates created to standardize the analysis setup stage. To recap what we just saw, the analysis setup is performed in NX using a wizard driven process. Analysis boundary conditions are applied onto the assembly parts and features. And the benefit of this step is that it's quick and intuitive to set up an analysis for the design engineer. And again, we're operating directly on our NX geometry. So we didn't have to pass anything through an intermediary like step. We have all of our underlying parameters to make changes geometry. Uh, as well as uh, those expressions to help us here as we as we optimize to specific solutions. Now, traditionally, one of the trickiest and most time consuming aspects of computational fluid dynamics has been the geometry meshing stage. 
The fluid and solid regions are discretized into grid cells, which is then passed to the solver for solution. It's normally at this stage that requires the geometry to be simplified for meshing or simulation compromises made for the sake of solution time. Flow EFD uses proprietary smart cell technology to alleviate a lot of the issues associated with the old way of doing things. Smart cells can have multiple fluid and solid control volumes to simplify the mesh generation step. Complex CAD models are meshed with minimal user input using an automatic mesher. Solution adaptive mesh refinement can even increase grid density mid-solve based on local flow gradients. So if we go normal to the screen here in NX, we can show the global mesh settings for Flow EFD. At present, the automatic mesh is applied at level four. We can move the slider to increase or decrease the global mesh density. And Flow EFD uses the finite volume method on a Cartesian grid to solve the Navier-Stokes equations. The mesh on the screen is only the base mesh before any cell subdivision has occurred and is visualized to give the user a rough idea of how the final generated mesh will be. The mesher can also be switched over to manual settings if desired, where cell sizes and refinement settings can be accessed. User-defined local initial meshes can be employed to manually apply finer grid on specific parts and areas of the model. So the mesh has already been generated for this model. So let's have a look. And if we zoom in around the base plate pins, we can see a finer mesh around the heat sink where the flow is constricted. The current plot is colored by levels which can range from zero to nine. Octree refinement is employed to split a single base mesh cell into eight smaller cells to increase to the next mesh level. This can happen up to a maximum of nine times to create exponentially smaller cells. This octree method performs two important tasks. First, the aspect ratio of every cell is identical and the smallest cell having the same aspect ratio as the base mesh. And the second is that the growth ratio is restricted to a single level to avoid very small cells transforming to large cells. These are both important for solver robust robustness and convergence behavior. The smart cells are always found at the interface between fluid and solid. This is where the boundary layer forms and the convective heat transfer occurs. Smart cells can have multiple control volumes, up to 12 within a single cell. And it is this technology which makes flow EFD meshes easy to generate and tolerant of dirty CAD geometry. So if we plot the surface of the heat sink base with mesh, we can see the smart cells which touch the water region. Proprietary wall functions are used in the smart cells to apply the boundary layer, and Flow EFD uses the K epsilon model for the bulk flow turbulence and an empirical engineering model for the near wall effects, which have been calibrated over a wide range of Reynolds numbers. Let's now have a look at the solid conductivity in a 2D plot through the model. A smart cell can have multiple solids within a single cell, up to 36. This makes resolving thin solids, such as the thermal interface materials, very straightforward and easy. When overlapping parts exist, such as between the ceiling O-ring and the base plate shown earlier, there's a material hierarchy which can be edited to get the correct material dominance. So the benefits of Flow EFD's unique measure are that it's very simple for a non-expert to generate an accurate grid. The boundary layer is handled automatically without the high cell requirement at the wall. The mesher has a default automatic setting, which can be augmented with manual conditions if necessary or desired. So to summarize, we saw how Flow EFD discretizes the domain into finite volume grid cells using an immersed boundary approach. The Flow EFD smart cells remove a lot of the complexity of meshing, which has traditionally been a stumbling block to reliable CFD results. Flow EFD removes these barriers and allows for non-experts to generate a robust mesh. So now let's have a look at some of the features of the Flow EFD solver. Flow EFD uses its own proprietary solver, similar to its own mesher. 
It exhibits very robust convergence behavior due to some of the features covered in the meshing section. And the classic 3D CFD solving approach is employed, which is augmented with engineering models to provide empirical correlations. This is especially pronounced in the boundary layer treatment. Wall functions are used in conjunction with the smart cells at the boundary layer, which means a coarse grid can be used at the wall without any consideration for the Y plus tolerances. All of this technology is implemented without requiring any user input, again, to reduce simulation complexity and promote ease of use. User-defined engineering goals are specified to extract key performance data and are also utilized to monitor solution convergence. So moving, moving further to the left in the ribbon bar, uh, we can see there are several goal types that we can apply to the model. Goals can be found in the form of global, point, surface, volume, and equation, depending on what needs to be, to be measured. So in our model, we've got goals for inlet water pressure and outlet water temperature. This will give us our delta P and our delta T. Volume goals are used to monitor the maximum temperature on the IGBT and diode parts, as these will be the hottest components in the model. The equation goals are, the, are at the bottom and are manually created to easily digest the deltas between the goals. During the actual solver execution, the usual Navier-Stokes equations are being solved to ensure conservation of mass, momentum, and energy. But the solver is also checking the goals to ensure steady state convergence behavior before the solver will stop. The convergence criteria can be adjusted for user-defined accuracy. So if we look at the solver options, we can see that the measure needs to be run before the actual solver. The measure and solver are both parallel compute enabled and can utilize as many CPU cores as needed. This is by default and requires no additional license unlike some of our competing software. The flow EFD license is also network floating by default, which means the CPU intensive solving process can be offloaded to a dedicated solving machine or server. And ultimately, then we have the option to close out the CAD so that the NX license can be freed up if the solve is going to be long. While the solver is running, the goals can be monitored graphically to ensure sensible results and preview plots can be created to ensure results confidence. This particular model takes about five minutes to generate a mesh for and about 20 minutes to solve to convergence. So the benefit to the user of the Flow EFD solver is that there is automatic monitoring and convergence behavior using intuitive goals. The solution can be monitored in real time to ensure results are sensible and there haven't been any, any errors setting the model up. The solver can be run on a remote machine then to free up our local resources and to free up the CAD license that was being used by NX. Again, to summarize what we just saw, the solver has many unique features which ensure reliable results. The solver exhibits robust convergence uh, driven by user-defined goals. And the process is seamless and the user can expect quick, accurate results with minimal manual intervention. So everything we've seen up to this point has been done so that we could produce the results necessary to predict the product performance. Similar to flow EFD pre-processing, the post-processing is performed within NX and also offers an intuitive user experience. Flow and thermal results can be visualized directly on the NX assembly and we can create various plot types. Numerical performance data can also be extracted into Excel and word format for maximum flexibility. So cut plots can be used to take 2D slices through the model along predefined planes. 
The cut plot is currently showing temperature and the legend can be adjusted to understand the range of values. We can probe the plot to get mouse cursor values of the temperature. And the plot can be animated to move the slice through the material. It's easy to change the parameter to velocity and we can see the flow winding through between the pins. We can also visualize the pressure variation, which gives us an idea of the pressure drop across the unit at this prescribed flow rate. Surface plots can be used to look at temperature variations and we can see the chip carrier temperature with the hottest region on the silicon dies. If we color the heat sink, we can see the cooler region in contact with the water. Flow trajectories can be used to see how the flow moves through the fluid region. And that flow can be animated and exported then if desired. Animating the flow in this way is useful for detecting recirculation zones or areas of high flow velocity. The goals which are used for convergence can be plotted on the screen showing the final steady state values. We can also see on the graph the convergence behavior of the goals with iterations on the x axis. So the goals here are smooth and plateaued, indicating a converged solution. This data, again, can then be exported out to Excel for further data analysis. NX sketches can be created and used for results extraction, even after the solver has been run. So here we have a line along the bottom of the flow region, and we can plot the pressure and temperature change along that path. Again, this data can be exported to Excel for further processing. A newer feature in Flow EFD is what we call the flux plot, which is a novel way of visualizing heat fluxes between NX parts and assemblies. So if we create a flux plot on the heat sink, we can see how much and where the heat is flowing into and out of that heat sink. The power filter is used to show where the power is coming from and how it eventually all goes into the fluid subdomain. Ultimately from these results, a report can be created uh, based on templates which can be ex, uh, customized, sorry, to export only selected data if required. And then ultimately these flow EFD results can also be uh, exported to FEA, including SimCenter 3D and FEMAP for fluid structure interaction co-simulation. And then finally, there's also a free unlicensed Flow EFD results viewer called Flow EFD View, which can be used to look at the results completely divorced from the NX user interface. So as we've seen in looking at the results, Flow EFD allows you to visualize performance in a way that physical tests just can't. You can really interrogate the results and get to the root cause of a flow or thermal issue. The data can be exported easily to Excel and Word in a standardized format for comparative uses. And a free unlicensed viewer is included on the installer image for sharing results with customers or internally. To summarize, Flow EFD makes looking at the results very easy for the, easy for the user as it's simply an extension of the NX. The data can be seen visually with plots and streamlines 
or be exported to Word and Excel for quantitative analysis. Either way, the key performance data can be easily evaluated and used comparatively to guide engineering design decisions. So let's now look at the sixth and final step in our demo, which is design exploration. So design exploration is the process of augmenting the base case simulation to look at variants and ideally to optimize the design. As Flow EFD is NX embedded, we can leverage those NX expressions directly as input variables. Alternatively, the project can be cloned onto a predefined family of assemblies variants. And there are ultimately several parametric study options available for looking at scenarios based on simulation or geometric inputs. So let's start the parametric study from the ribbon toolbar. As we can see, there are various options available depending on what needs to be achieved. The design of experiments and optimization is a Flow EFD native optimizer, which uses a brute force approach to seek an optimum. A new optional module is the HEADS optimizer, which has a more intelligent algorithm. The first tab in the input variables, we can select simulation inputs and X expressions, We'll go ahead and choose uh, some of those NX expressions, uh, but we also have access to part family parameters and assembly constraints. So we saw right at the start how the base plate was designed with expressions controlling some of the features. Here's what we can do with those three parameters of interest, the diameter, the draft angle, and the pitch of the heat sink pins. We then need to give a min and max range for each of these inputs and the output variables, and we can select the goal we'd like to optimize on. So for this, I'm selecting the maximum IGBT temperature, which we'd like to minimize, and the delta P, which we'd also like to minimize. We can also define some constraints here if there are any engineering guidelines for operation. So for example, uh, the cooler cannot have more than a 0.17 PSI pressure drop. Finally, the scenario table allows us to select the optimization algorithm. And as the delta P and maximum temperature are opposing goals requiring a compromise, we use the Pareto function, or front, sorry, to find an acceptable operating point. The software is then going to run 40 scenarios to calibrate the input variable sensitivity. So upon completion of those 40 runs, we can see the study plot showing a graph of the two input variables. And the software has identified some feasible points and also an optimum scenario. In this case, scenario 37. We can right click and create this project in Flow EFD as the optimum. So jumping over to this in design, we can see the denser pin arrangement, but steeper draft angle for freer flow. This optimized variant has been saved automatically. So performing the parametric study allows the user to quantify the difference a design change has, and this has tangible benefits on product operation. And all of that was created automatically and on the fly. We didn't have to save it out in a separate place. There were no extra pieces of geometry. It was, again, all created automatically. So what we just saw there was the use of the optional embedded HEADS optimizer, which has market leading intelligent optimization algorithms built in. The user can select input variables and the software will determine the best combination of them. The optimum can then be saved as a new NX assembly member. To summarize, Flow EFD allows users to perform simulation variants intelligently to quickly identify the best operating point. Not leaving the CAD means that the geometrical inputs are available for variation rather than an exported step file, which again would have no feature tree. So these six steps are the unique value proposition for Flow EFD for NX, which separate the tool from other competitive offerings. And in conclusion, Flow EFD is easy, fast, and it's accurate. 
Uh, the features shown in this demo highlight what makes Flow EFD an easy to use designer level analysis tool for front loading CFD analysis. Some of our core market segments can be seen here, such as auto, aero, um, plant and process, and power generation. And Flow EFD is considered a general purpose tool which can be used anywhere your product has fluid flow or heat transfer phenomena. Again, the big differentiating factors is it's it's a general purpose tool, therefore it's used by, you know, 90% mechanical engineers, 10% CFD analysts, as opposed to your more targeted specific CFD tools, which are 90% analysts, 10% mechanical engineers. So finally, I'd like to just point out uh, in the next couple of minutes, some applications within the automotive industry uh, of where Flow AFD has been utilized. Just to give you an idea of its its breadth and capabilities. So we look at um, some external aerodynamics on vehicles, drag and lift, fuel consumption, flow around parts such as mirrors, cooling of brakes, underhood aerodynamics, air intakes, external flow of exhaust gas, window and mirror cleaning, and thermal design of lighting elements. So handles external aerodynamics just as internal aerodynamics or internal flow situation, sorry, such as we might find in exhaust pipes and manifolds, where we're looking to analyze and improve flow performance and thermal behavior. So we're looking at not only just steady state simulations, but transient simulations, uh, the temperature distribution, and therefore the subsequent structural analysis based on that temperature uh, distribution, right? Again, we can tie in to, um, sim center structures in order to do the the standard fea based on our results from the cfd and thermal within flow efd clutch fluids uh where our primary goal is to analyze the flow of transmission fluid into geared components with an automotive clutch housing model and we're looking to control our pressure loss engine cooling where we want to analyze heat transfer within an automotive cylinder head so we want to look at coolant pressure drop and size our pumps uh, for achieving the rated flow necessary. Climate control, both from a, a cabin modeling uh, where we're trying to analyze uh, the climate control functions and the passenger comfort down to HVAC ducts and fans where we want to improve the flow field uh, and how we're getting that flow uh, how we're distributing that flow, what the pressure drops are, and how we can optimize those fan blades and the volute geometry uh, in order to optimize our passenger comfort, uh, whether it be heating or cooling. Catalytic converters, where our primary goal is to analyze flow distribution, pressure drops, and heat transfer, and understand the effect on flow maldistribution in the manifolds, ensure uniform flow through the catalyst, test various packaging options, and then to engine control units, and I'll just kind of jump through these last few. I know there's a bunch here, climate control fans. But again, the point is to show that just within the automotive industry, there's a, a large amount of use cases um, for CFD work. Uh, but historically, that CFD work has been considered too costly um, and too analyst intensive to be done uh, on a regular basis or maybe on smaller items. Uh, and therefore it, it, it's only used for the complex geometries and the complex situations. Whereas Flow EFD is giving us a simple designer-based package, in this case, integrated into NX, uh, that allows us to handle all of these internal and external fluid flow situations, automatically generate our fluid flow volumes, automatically mesh, uh, automatically converge and solve, and do all of that on our underlying uh, NX geometry so that we don't have to recreate any of this geometry to perform the analysis. So one of the reasons I, I kind of show all of these uh, different areas is that we have numerous white papers um, and studies that have been done in each of these areas. Uh, and we will get a link out um, to Automation Alley and then also on our Tata homepage that can link to some of those white papers so that you can look uh, into a more detailed analysis. Uh, I didn't want to bore you with customer success stories, but um, 
we have some great white papers that go into detail as to where this has been used in industry uh, and the feedback that was given on its use and its ease of use. Just flip through these last few here. Intake manifolds, right? Uh, flow rate optimization versus manufacturability. Battery cooling and electric vehicles, obviously very pertinent in these, these times. Uh, with the goal being lighter weight, lower cost batteries. Um, so how do we look at advanced cooling techniques in order to have complex geometries to these batteries in order to get higher uh, optimized results? And then down to, as, as our example today showed, the IGBT cold plate, where we're looking to sufficiently cool uh, in order to ensure the optimal performance. So again, most companies are relying on their design engineers to hand over their designs to CFD analysts to analyze those proposed designs for flow and heat transfer effects. And ultimately that process is highly inefficient and time consuming. And it's just not something that's normally done within your standard MCAT environment. But by using Flow EFD uh, in its embedded form within NX or any of the other MCAD systems it is embedded into, design engineers can test their designs quickly, discard those bad designs earlier, and only progress the final design for verification. Due to the unique intelligent technology at its core, Flow EFD is easy to use, fast and accurate, and ultimately can help shorten the simulation time uh, that we see in a traditional process dramatically. So we have seen productivity gains of up to 40, 40 times versus the traditional kind of ANSYS CFD approach. So as a supplement in, in talking about new software, uh, we also want to throw out there that with any sort of software, right, we, we need to have some sort of training and Tata Technologies offers uh, a broad level of education support, everything from our uh, self-developed online training for I Get It, right, where we have 300 plus training hours for Siemens PLM, NX and Team Center, Sim Center, Solid Edge, uh, and also within the I Get It uh, platform, all of the other systems as well. So we have training for Katia, Autodesk. Um, so we allow you to customize that training to your specific needs, only, only use certain areas of a particular application. Do we want to add specific areas or processes to the courses? I get it, it provides that full access for customers to edit and make changes to courses and assessments so that it matches what it is you do at your uh, at your facility. And then ultimately we can upgrade that online self-paced training to instructor led over the web training or mentoring as we call it, where we can work with a live instructor so that you can ask questions, get feedback, kind of uh, really get into those, how do I, how do I questions? And this is just the last slide then on I get it as well. We can see over to the right, 30 unique course topics, 400 self-paced hours, 1500 hands-on uh, exercises. So, uh, and this is just what we as Tata Technologies offer. Uh, we also partner with Siemens on their specific training as well. Um, so we wanna make sure that we have you covered. Um, and again, I, I really uh, would urge you to reach out to us um, for some of those white papers and success stories to go into more detail and have a further conversation. I just tried to show today uh, the basic overview and flow of, of what Flow EFD looks like within NX, how it's very similar to working within your standard NX design world. Um, and so if you use Siemens NX, please let's take a closer look at SimCenter Flow EFD the only fluid flow and heat transfer simulation tool that fits into your design process without requiring you to change the way you design products. Contact us for some more information and to arrange a free trial. And ultimately, guys, that's the end of my presentation for this morning. Thank you for paying attention. I hope there was something useful uh, that you got out of this or some sort of information that you'd like to follow up on. Uh, we look forward to having those discussions with you. And at this point, I will throw it back to Allison and, and open it up, see if we have any questions uh, that we can answer that came up.
So I'll jump in here um, and say, I do have a question. So what other MCAT systems beyond Siemens NX does Flow EFD work with? Okay, yeah, great question. So um, Flow EFD existed, uh, it exists, I should say, outside of, of any particular MCAT application, right? So there is a standalone Flow EFD version. There is Flow EFD embedded into Siemens NX. There is Flow EFD embedded into Siemens Solid Edge. Flow EFD is then also embedded into CATIA V5 and Creo. So those are our, our main MCAD systems uh, that have a direct integration with Flow EFD. Awesome. So the Q&A at the bottom is open. If anybody has questions, feel free to type them in um, and we can answer them live. And if you guys have follow-up questions, feel free to, uh, to, to tag us in, send us an email. Uh, again, we'd love to get some more information in front of you and, and answer your specific needs. Um, and not just answer them, but really what we find is uh, the utilization of the software here is, is what really sells it right uh we we want you to to get hands on and and not say what is it capable of but what is the ease in which i am capable of gaining the solutions that i desire so if someone is familiar with nx design how long would it take them to get up to speed with sim center flow efd in nx well, hopefully, as you saw from uh, from the brief demonstration here today, uh, you know your workflow, your look. That's that's the beauty of it being embedded within one of these systems um, here, particularly within NX. Uh, so it's it's not a big jump. Uh, it's the same sort of workflow that you're used to. So what we found, and then kind of the response that Siemens has gotten for this product is that many design engineers say that a, a single day was enough to get them up and running uh, to be able to jump into the software and, and do what they needed to. So as little as eight hours, once you kind of figure out the basic process, which again, this is, uh, even though it is fluid dynamics, it's still a, a basic FEA process, right? So there's the definition of where we're performing the study, what are our boundary conditions, what are uh, our loads or our heat sources, uh, what fluids are we using. So once you kind of work your way around those things, uh, these solutions are, are very user friendly to use. I, I myself am certainly on the design engineer side the majority of my life and, and even on the manufacturing side more than design. Uh, but I've always loved CFD and I found that once I picked this up, I was I was going back and starting simulations on things that I had always wanted to do, but I didn't have the skills uh, to execute within a, a, a full-blown CFD program. So the learning curve is very low. Um, the, the automatic nature of the software is, is amazing, right? The automatic meshing, the automatic fluid domain. These are things that you used to kind of have to know the tricks of the trade in order to uh, develop your models efficiently. And these things are being done for you um, on the fly within the software, giving you the freedom to look at different design variations. And as we showed, uh, optimize those, those variations. So good question, long answer, sorry. But uh, no, yes, it was very, easy, very easy to use. No, that's good. Um, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Um, I guess any final thoughts or anything as we wrap up? Again, this was just a, an overview, right? Uh, what we'd love to hear about is uh, particular applications that you have within your industry. And let's, let's take a look at those. Let's get the software in front of your design engineers and, and prove that this is a feasible, user-friendly way to go. Perfect. Well, if anybody has any other questions, feel free to reach out to Automation Alley. Um, we can get them to Casey and he can reach out um, specifically to you. Um, thank you so much for that overview and for speaking with us this morning. And thank you to everybody that attended. Um, as to our next tech takeover, um, we do have it on September 29th. Um, and it's going to be on the topic of cybersecurity risk and resilience. Go ahead, Casey. Oh, nope. 
I, sorry, I was just putting in there just some some statements. I I said all I need to say. Thank you, Allison, for your time. And thank you, Automation Alley, for, for allowing us to host today. Yeah, no problem. And like I said, we will have this recorded too. So it will be on our website if anybody wants to rewatch it, share it with customers, friends, coworkers. So there's a lot of good information. Be sure to watch it again. Like I said, it will be on YouTube as well as our website. So thank you, everyone.